Uh, greetings, engineers. Uh, James Murithi here, doing what we do best, which is to equip you with one little hack every day. Showcase one uh, simple and easy to apply workflow, which helps you, uh, of course, become more productive uh, by performing tasks uh, with uh, the best uh, practices that you need. Uh, to come across here. So uh, today I want us to talk about something interesting, which is the subassembly composer. So subassembly composer, of course, um, well, it, it provides us with an interface uh, for composing and modifying complex subassemblies without the need uh, for programming. So to put this in context, uh, you get to have scenarios where uh, when you're designing your road projects, you will find that you have situations or uh, sections that will require unique uh, sections or cross sections. And of course, you will require to do corridor modeling for such uh, sections. So that's why the subassembly composer is very important. It can help us to compose complex uh, subassemblies and visually inspect them using a very easy to use interface. So this is just a drag and drop. And for today's session, we cover about, of course, the introduction, which we are done with. Uh, then we go to how do you launch uh, your subassembly composer. Kindly note that your subassembly composer comes uh, with your civil 3D installation data. So all you need to do is launch it. And then after that, we'll be able to look at um, the interface, which is very easy to use and intuitive. And then after that, now we'll be talking about uh, the key panels that we have in this uh, uh, software. So what I need us to do is to launch the subassembly composer. All you need to do if you're using Windows, of course, just go to the start. Um, and then once you go there, you can get to search and in the, your search, function you can just type in subassembly composer and you have it once it pops you you need to do is just open and you will have launched your subassembly up and running all right so once you've been able to launch the subassembly composer you uh, find such an intuitive interface like the one you have on screen and we will be talking about the five main panels that we have. Number one is the flowchart, because which is uh, the start here. This is like the workspace where we'll be dragging and dropping uh, different point and cones. And then after that, of course, we have uh, the toolbox. Of course, just like in Civil GT, this is where you have all the components of design. So the first one is uh, the geometry. Uh, tab in the geometry. This is where we have the point, so which you just need to drop and uh, you know drag and drop. So the point, link, and shape. These are for simple subassemblies. And then after that, we talk about the advanced geometry, where now we have the curves, the intersection point, the daylighting when you need fillet and loop uh, geometry. We'll be exploring these uh, in this series. Then after that, of course, we have auxiliary components. These are the ones that you need to actually customize a unique section. For example, if you're doing a cross section for a, a, a rail design and all of that, so you can be able to use this uh, to and the different element that you need to have. And after that, of course, there is the workflow. So this workflow basically helps us in organizing our workflow, the sequencing. So the first is the sequencing. So when you have a very complex uh, sub assembly or assembly, you may arrange it into sequence. And then of course, decisions. There are scenarios where we have a true and a false um, uh, operation. And then the switching, of course, there are miscellaneous here and the reports and all of that. We'll be able to explore that as we go. So the next one is the flow. So in the flow chart, this is where you create these flow charts. This is always the start, the origin point. And then you can be dropping, for example, if you want to drop a shape and a link and all of that. Same as the one that we have in assemblies. 
in Cru 3D. After that, of course, is the properties. So for example, if we have a parameter P1 here, we can be able to uh, adjust and modify these different properties. We could also be exploring that. Then after that, we have the preview. So in the preview, for example, this is where now everything you get to work on or design in the flowchart, you'll be able to see um, a representation of the same preview on this screen. And then after that, of course, the most important section is where we have the packet settings. So in the packet settings, this is where, for example, we're able to name uh, the assembly, and then after that, you have the input and output parameters. So for parametric design, and then of course, we have to set targets. This is, is very important when you go to setting targets in code do in civil 3D. We'll also be talking about how do you update these parameters so that they can be dynamic and you can be able to modify them even after in, importing the subassembly in civil 3D. After that, super elevation, the savior of lives uh, of our road users right there, safety. So this is where you can be able to modify the parameters that you need to and specify, of course, uh, the axis of rotation and all of those parameters to be able to do that. Can't, of course, this is when we're using designing the rail real tracks so we can be able to modify these and then of course the view, event viewer where you visualize or you inspect all the events to be able to carry out so that is basically all you need to know about the user interface super easy uh just take your time listen to this one more time and you'll be able to understand how this works right so after that of course we have the ribbon so this is the file function this is where you can be able to create a new a workflow so for example this one remember we only you can only be able to work with one interface at a time so for example if i want them down to save those ones i'll be able to open a new one uh, that's how you all start a new project and then after that of course you open for, for example i would want to open something i was working on here so for example the abutment um, i'll be able to open the file so that's how you get to open and you can see the sequence um, the, the sequencing that you are talking about being in practice right there. And then after that, of course, if you wanted to save recent files and all of that and exit, and then, for example, remember that these layouts are, you know, you can make them floating uh, panels. And if now you've tampered with them probably and you want to just restore the default, you go to view, then the last functionality, which is restore default layout, and then you will have your interface in its default settings. Then after that, if you stack or you need to explore more about this specific interface or whatever functionalities, you can seek help, then you'll be able to view help from how to get center. So uh, that is it. That's the information you need to have for now. So see you around as we get to explore how to use this one to create complex and unique sections. And then of course, how we get to import them in CU3D. So I'll make this process very easy to follow step by step. So stay around, stick around, make sure you implement this one. You don't need any data and just implement whatever special section that you have in mind. So cheers. See you around, of course, follow us, James Muredi, Ronsab, on our social media, so just Ronsab. Thank you, and see you 